For as little as $1 per month, you can support independent journalism by supporting Mia Media on Patreon. That's mere pocket change to support quality local content creation. To subscribe, visit patreon.com slash M-I-E-U-M media. Thank you to all paid subscribers for helping to grow Mia Media and for supporting independent journalism. On October 11, 2016, a YouTuber named Nick Johnson posted a video titled The 10 Worst Places in Connecticut, Explained. In the 6 minute, 13 second long video, Johnson argues that, spoiler alert, Wyndham, Derby, Meriden, New Britain, New Haven, Bridgeport, Hartford, New London, Waterbury, and Willimantic are the worst places in Connecticut. The video itself has over 667,000 views at the time of recording, but the number is likely higher now. The video went viral. As we'll get into later, the video has its issues. But part of why it went viral is because Connecticut cities do have an image problem. Mia Media reached out to the elected officials in the 10 cities targeted by the video, which we will be releasing in the upcoming weeks. But before that, I want to talk about the aforementioned video, and why we're spending the time to shed light on an opposing narrative concerning Connecticut cities. Let's start by taking a look at the introduction to the video itself. Ah, Connecticut. Beauty, open spaces, and lots of wonderful people. There are certainly lots of places in the Nutmeg State that are really nice. In fact, most of the Northeast would be jealous of some of the best places Connecticut has to offer. While lots of places in Connecticut are truly fabulous, there's a large number of places here that outright suck. The worst parts of Connecticut. You know them when you see them. They're the parts of Connecticut where you don't want to go, if you can help it. The goal today is to highlight the places in Connecticut that are the worst of them all. How do we do it? Well, we measure the things most bad places have. You know, where people are broke, where lots of people don't have a job, and where crime is sky high. We even measured the public school education levels. Let's get started. Right off the bat, it's obvious that this video has a sarcastic tone, which makes it a little hard to tell when he is joking and when he is alleging to be making a fact-based argument. That's part of why we want to take a deeper look. For a video that has so many views and makes so many claims, how are these rankings calculated? And obviously there's some misleading imagery that he uses, but I want to focus on the methodology that creator Nick Johnson spoke briefly about. Well, we measure the things most bad places have. You know, where people are broke, where lots of people don't have a job, and where crime is sky high. We even measured the public school education levels. At face value, this may seem like an almost scientific way to assess Connecticut cities, and perhaps can explain some of the appeal that has led to it racking up over half a million views. But when you give it some thought, it's actually quite vague. What sources does he use? How much does each factor weigh into the final calculation? And why does he only use these metrics? Neither the video nor the description explain, and Nick Johnson did not respond to multiple requests for comment. But the video description did say that Nick Johnson helps run a website called Home Snacks. Here's a part of Home Snacks introductory video. We're regional infotainment. People want to know what it's like to live in different places in America, so we came up with as many unique rankings as we could. How do we come up with our rankings? We scrape the internet to get data and use an algorithm to rank cities. Using CHIP, our super secret cool computer program, we can turn one video into 50. All we have to do is make a video about one state and tell CHIP to go out and duplicate the same video for each state. That way we can make a ton of videos with one click. That doesn't really help to clarify the questions I have, and nor does anywhere I could find on Home Snacks itself or on its sibling site, Road Snacks. They're basically the same website, only Home Snacks shows you the best of lists, whereas Road Snacks shows you the worst of. But I managed to track down the companion article, written by a Nick James, which seems to relate to the viral video created by Nick Johnson. We'll come back to these two Nicks later on. The companion article was also unhelpful. The page itself has been updated with the 2019 supposed worst places, and the previous year's entries have been expunged. There was a bit more information about the methodology, but it seemed to pertain only to the 2019 list. The sources they linked to, 
the census's most recent American Community Survey, and the FBI Uniform Crime Report, both are from 2017. If they're using data from 2017, how did they generate lists of 2018 and 2019? And what sources did they use in the 2016 video about Connecticut? Even looking at cached versions of the article from 2015 through 2017 did not contain any information about the 2016 Connecticut video. At the time of publication, I was unable to find any details. But what I was able to find was a bit shocking. According to a 2016 interview, the co-founder of Home Snacks was quoted as saying, we figured out pretty quickly that if you tell people in a city that their city is a part of a top 10 best place to live for something, they'll click on you. And often, if you send that link to a media outlet in that city, they'll do a story on it. And indeed, a number of reputable sources have quoted Homesnack's dubious research. In 2017, Nick Johnson was discovered to have been recruiting actors to make intentionally dishonest claims on social media against environmentalists who oppose an oil pipeline in Louisiana. Remember how the 2019 companion article was written by a Nick James and the 2016 YouTube video was uploaded by a Nick Johnson? A part of Johnson's recruitment tactics involved creating fake aliases and publishing opinion pieces under fake names. Okay, I'll admit that we're getting a little far flung from discussing the original video that criticized places in Connecticut, but I think it's necessary to put that video into context. Nick Johnson, Home Snacks, Road Snacks, etc. don't really care about Connecticut or even about accuracy. They're not transparent, they're unwilling to provide sources, and they don't respond for comment. And apparently, Nick Johnson is using the clout he gained from creating these sorts of videos to do some pretty dishonest stuff. Simply put, this video is not credible and its lack of transparency makes it difficult to fact check. And despite that, the video still has over half a million views, thousands of comments, and tons of shares. Look, this video preys upon decades old stereotypes, which is why it went viral and pops up frequently in Connecticut YouTube users suggested videos. But even regarding that video itself, these stereotypes are surprisingly common with many people around the state, and you can see it on full display in comment sections, meme pages, and message boards alike. And that's why this video is worth discussing. Over the next three weeks, we'll be highlighting discussions with elected officials in each of the 10 places mentioned in the video. They'll each make their case about why their respective cities don't deserve such bad reputations. People who make such comments about Connecticut cities might say that they're only joking, and even the Road Snacks article itself says it's an opinion piece, while also claiming that it's scientific, but these sort of comments can have real-world implications. And hey, even if people are just joking, isn't it still worth hearing a different point of view? Here is the schedule for the next few weeks, and I encourage everyone to watch with an open mind. Links can be found in the description below.